There is no two-state solution for this lot. No peaceful coexistence of Arabs and Jews. It's they who hide amongst civilians and store bombs in schools. As Alistair Heath has written, it's they who are responsible for forcing Israel to defend itself with an inevitable tragic impact on civilians. We must hold the terrorists morally responsible for every death, Israeli or Palestinian." Unquote. So why are we, the West, apologetic, equivocal in our support for Israel? Why does the pro-Israel alliance seem to be fraying? Why do we have even the American Secretary of State calling for humanitarian pause in the war? But there they were, protesters outside the White House on Saturday and around the world, quote, end the siege on Gaza now. It's unacceptable to allow for the loss of so many innocent lives and we cannot consider this a proportional conflict, said one protester. This is a massacre, a stain on our history. I cannot accept that my taxes are funding this. You see, the West is weak again in defending itself in the face of hard left activists, Islamist extremists and old fashioned racists. Barely a word about the worst murder of Jews since the Holocaust. What do we get? The extreme, irrational demonization of Israel. As Alistair Heath describes it, the new blood libel of our times and an attempt at inflaming passions and provoking war, terror, death and destruction. In this hysterical denunciation of Israel, the diabolical double standards, this reaction to Israel can only be explained as the current iteration of the world's oldest hatred. This is the latest manifestation of anti-Semitism, the latest barbaric act in meeting the terms of the Hamas Charter of 1988 calling for the obliteration of Israel. It began on October 7. Israel is merely determined that it should never happen again. If the cowardice of the West continues, the consequences for what we know as Western civilization will be more profound than we can possibly imagine.